Hey there everyone, thank you so much for being here and thank you so much for watching. This is the Unify UXG Lite and it's the newest addition to the Unify Gateway lineup. And unlike the Unify Dream Machines, this does not come with a built-in controller, meaning you will need an already existing controller to adopt this device into. This is exactly what I'm going to show you today, how to take this device and drop it in to an already existing network. And I'm going to use a controller that's not local. We will need to use layer 3 adoption and I'm intentionally aiming for the least convenient scenario because with the cloud key, which is a local controller, the adoption is much easier. You just plug it in and the cloud key discovers the device and the adoption is easy. Anyway, I've talked enough. Let's get this party started. All right, guys, so we are at the computer and let me start off by quickly reviewing what's the topology on our demo network right here. I have a, uni a, a gateway, sorry, it's not a, it's not a Unify gateway, it's a, it's a PFSense firewall, but it can be any other uh, firewall out there. From there, I have connected to the LAN port a Unify switch, in this case, it's a Flex Mini. And to that I'm going to connect, I don't have it already connected, I'm going to connect a Unify access point, but my computer is also connected to the Unify switch right here, and I have all of these devices communicating to a controller that's off-site, it's a cloud controller for all intents and purposes, it's located off-site, and the way I'm doing my adoptions using layer 3, is with DHCP option 43. By the way, I have a dedicated video on layer three adoptions. It's maybe, I, I think, uh, created a year and a half ago, but it really is still very much relevant today. I recommend that you watch it. I will put a link to this video in the top right corner and in the description of this video. So let me quickly show you my PFSense firewall right here and the way I have my adoption set up through DHCP option 43 if I go to if I go to the DHCP server and scroll down I've configured option 43 by the way it, you need to convert it into a hex a, a string there are several websites you can go to convert your controller IP address into a hex value and this this way any unified device I connect to my LAN will automatically show up in my Unify controller without me needing to SSH into the device and doing a set inform command. But this is, this is just my preference. You can choose whatever you want as long as you already have a Unify controller already up and running. In fact, this is my Unify controller. Of course, it's a, it's a demo controller, so I only have one device in it. But for all intents and purposes, this is a real Unify network with a cloud controller that I already have set a, 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 a Wi-Fi network and I already set up a few VLANs and if I'll go to my VLAN you can see that it's just the VLAN because this Unify controller does not, still does not have any Unify gateway in it. So this is the situation as it is currently and what we need to do right now is to drop in the, U, the UXG light instead of the PFSense firewall. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to power off my PFSense firewall. I'm going to power on my UXG light. I'm, I'm going to connect it to my ISP to the WAN port and my computer directly to the LAN port. I'm going to resume the recording once I'm done. All right, guys. So the PFSense is powered off and set aside. The UXG is connected to my ISP and to my computer directly. So if I'll open up network connections, I see that my computer got an IP address of 192.168.1.112 and I got a gateway of 192.168.1.1 and this is exactly what I'm going to type in to my web browser. So let's go ahead and do that. 192.168.1.1 and it looks like some sort of a splash screen going on. All right, 
So the device name UX Delight, I'm going to accept that. If you have, like me, an ISP connection that's giving you a connection through DHCP, you don't have to configure anything. We can move right along. If you're using, for example, PPPoE to connect to your ISP, you will need to click on other setup options and set your connection type, for example, PPPoE. In my case, I'm using DHCP, so I'm going to cancel out of that. And what I'm going to do next is to manually connect to a Unify network. And I'm not using a cloud key, I'm using a self-hosted controller. And I'm going to try, first of all, use the alternative layer three adoption. I'm going to, first of all, try to use a fully qualified domain name. And let's click on next. Now it's, sent, it's telling me that the adoption request was sent. And now I'm going to go back to my Unify controller and hopefully I'm going to see the UXG waiting to be adopted. So let's click on got it. Let's go back to our Unify controller. Let's refresh it. And we can see that the Unify UXG Lite is indeed ready to be adopted. So let's go ahead and try to adopt it. This can take about a minute or two. So I'm going to pause the recording and, and continue it once the adoption process is finished. All right, great. So looks like the adoption is completed successfully. What I am going to do right now is I'm going to connect my Unify switch to the LAN port of the UXG Lite instead of my computer. And I'm going to connect my computer to the, U to the Unify switch. Again, I'm going to pause the recording and resume it once that part is done. All right, guys. So I connected the Unify switch to the LAN port of the UXG Lite and my computer to the Unify switch. I gave it a few minutes and then I refreshed the page and I can see that the Flex Mini is ready. It's already adopted, but it's ready to be updated. I'm going to do it later on. But now, since we have a gateway on our network, let's go to the settings page right here into the networks. And now we can see that the VLANs that we have created when we didn't, when we still didn't have a gateway on our network, they're still showing as third party gateway. We will need to recreate them in order to make them usable. So let's go back, click on manage, select the two VLANs and click remove. I'm going to change my LAN IP address to the one that existed before the UXG. I'm not going to re-IP all my VLANs. So it was 10.100.2.1. I am going to enable DHCP starting from 100 to 200. And I am going to use option 43. I'm going to type the IP address, the external IP address of my Unify controller because my controller is located elsewhere from this network physically and logically. So I'm going to fill in the IP address. All right, so now I'm going to create a new VLAN. It will be VLAN 30 because that's what it was. Sorry guys, I had to redo the entire thing because I changed the LAN, IP, the LAN subnet and my computer needed to receive a new DHCP list from the new subnet. I'm going to quickly breeze through the creation of the VLAN again. All right, so we've created a VLAN and I only did it just for uh, the sake of doing it and seeing that everything is uh, working according to our plan. So that's great. We can see that 
you can see that the flex min is showing offline it needs also to receive another DHCP lease from the new subnet so let's go ahead and restart it and while the flex mini is rebooting itself I am also going to pause the recording I'm going to plug in a Unify access point again I just want to see that adoption of Unify devices with the new UXG light is just working as expected so I'm going to pause the recording and I'm going to grab the Unify access point all right guys so I powered on the Unify access point I connected it to the PoE injector and after about a minute or two it booted up and I can see that it's ready to be adopted so let's click on adopt let's give it a minute or two one other thing I want to test before I wrap up this video the UXG Lite is supposed to be able to do up to 1 gig throughput with IPS enabled I only have 600 uh, megabytes from my ISP but I do want to enable I uh, IPS notify and block and I'm going to set it on high and while the access point is adopting I do want to run a quick speed test that I uh, that I just want to verify that I'm not actually getting any speed penalty when turning IPS on so let's go ahead and open fast.com and looks like I'm not getting any speed penalty enabling IPS which is great all right let me just go and verify that the access point is adopting without any issues let's give it another minute or so alright so I already see the blue LED ring in the access point let me just try to refresh this page yep looks like the UAP was adopted without any issues so I'm going to update these devices in the meantime I hope this video was informative for you and I hope you liked it if you do please hit the like button and subscribe it will really help me a lot and I hope to see you all in the next video bye everyone